particular idea when it was first put to you? Didn't you? I it was a fucking awful idea <laughs> initially. In that, this was something we were, we were it's slightly uncharted territory here. So, um, no, I had to be. There was a certain amount of risk um, involved in, in taking this job and doing it and kind of trusting that because the producers and nobody had sort of filmed drama in this way before and none of us had worked in this way and um, so like with all risks you know what I mean you kind of you have to there's a point at which you make a decision to go oh fuck it I hope it pays off basically. So what convinced you to do it then? Um, well, partly it was uh, that once they, once Damien and Claire were involved, and I thought, well, they're good. That seems like a good idea. And um, it was, I liked the storylines. I thought that, um, I did think that if you're going to pick out the one thing on the news item that I want, I'm interested in, that's what they're picking out as the storylines. Um, and I tend not to pick things in my life that are conventional and if I am drawn towards things if I'm absolutely honest where there's a level of you know I, I, I you know I quite like thinking outside of the box that appeals to me in fact the very things that I've been avoiding for many years are those thank you those things that um you know are, are too dull maybe um you know I mean I think the thing about this is that it feels very contemporary and um and it feels like, you know, for God's sake, I don't know, last year I did a series on the internet. And I didn't do it because I thought anybody would ever see it. I did it because I thought it would be interesting, because I think that's um, an interesting, you know, thing. And lots of young, interesting people are working at making drama for the internet that you just click on. So, you know, it's the same sort of decision. You go, you know what, this, there may be a payoff here. And... Um, I, and also, because on a selfish level, I want Channel 4 to do more drama, uh, Channel 5 to do more drama, I should say. Um, I don't want Channel 4 to do more drama. They do, <laughs> they do plenty. Yeah, well, them to do much less and them to do some more cooking with me. Well, how was um, that, um, but, um, working with Channel 5? I mean, we, we've heard that this is their first drama they've done in like eight years, so... Um, I, look, I think there's always an excitement. This is one of the things that's appealing about it. At least it's not, you know... You know, we're not sort of drudging through the same old, you know, you turn up, you do your job in the same way you have done for many years. You, you know, there's a pattern to it. There was no pattern to this. We were making the pattern up as we went along. And some of that is really hard. And some of it, I mean, this was not an easy shoot. This was definitely was a challenge, but it's the challenge was in a good way. Thank you, thank you. Um, and it was a, a challenge that, as I say, through it, there were days when you go, this isn't going to pay off. This is, you know, we we shot this very quickly. Um, we shot it in real hours, real police hours, in the sense that we worked ourselves into the ground. You know, um, probably on the same wages as the police officers themselves. <laughs> and um, uh, and you know, it it felt, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, we shot that episode in two days. That episode would take two weeks. But did you feel like you were police then? Um, well. Uh, um, I felt as overworked as the person I was playing, yes. Um, but what, what did certainly did happen by the end of it, you walk around with a, long enough with a lanyard around your neck saying you're the boss uh, and that you can arrest people. I tell you, when I was in Sainsbury's, I bloody nearly arrested a couple of people. <laughs> when they were like queue jumping, I'm like, police, right, get her on the floor. Right, what do you think you're doing? This old lady was in front of you. You, get, you do get slightly power crazy with it, you know. And when you were in the scene... Um, of course, there's no script. You're thinking like a policeman, are you? Yeah, you, ha you do have... Well, I, I think that I was... Personally, I approached it that I was just trying to be logical. Um, so, which I think probably is, thinking like a, a, a police person. We had, an, we had a police officer there the whole time. So, um, in the middle of a scene, <clears throat> I might well ch shout out, Steve, can I say that? Can I not say that? And he'll shout it yes or no or whatever. Um, but you... You try and think as logically as you can. You try not to be biased. That's actually the hardest thing. You try and, um, but because the storylines are so fresh to us, you sort of, you are. I mean, honestly, I watched that. I didn't know who did it. I couldn't remember. I was. I'm like a goldfish. And like, I'm like, who did it? Who did it today? Right in one ear out. You know, because you're just moving on to the next case, um, and you have to remain. I mean, I think people. That's the thing about um, police dramas. I think have become. You know, it's an opportunity often for writers and, you know, actors and everybody else to sort of really delve into the character of those police officers and the emotional effect on them. I think that we 
in a way, had a different job to do. We, we, and I think it is realer, to be honest. I think you do have emotional days as a police officer, and I think you do. But basically, you're doing a bloody job. Do you know what I mean? You have to find the person, the girl, the, 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 the person that um, has set fire to that building. You, you have to get on with it. If you were crying at lunchtime, you wouldn't have time to do your job. So I think there is a sort of impartiality that is common to being a police officer. How that, you know, work? I mean, were you, were you told when you started the scene, were you told where the scene was going to end? Start and end, and then no, but uh, what you we got a breakdown often the night before, um, of, and the, the biggest problem with the breakdown the night before is the names, because <clears throat> you have to keep saying names so viewers know who you're talking about. So every now and then when I in that said right, let's talk to grandma. That's probably because I can't remember her name, <laughs> um, but I do know she's a grandma, and that's okay because I reckoned that that police officer up. wouldn't. Well, she yeah. would. Exactly that. She wouldn't necessarily. I'd be if, if I just got a new case and there's a whole string of suspects. I'm not going to instantly know all their names. But on telly, you instantly know all their names. But, it's, but I think it's better that you say it's the boyfriend. Um, you know the other guys. So you get the breakdown mm -hmm. the night before. Um, you read it through. Two, you get two days on that yeah. on that script yeah. on that plot let's yeah. say and um before each scene you know that there's some dna evidence you know that i perhaps i know that i'm going to interview a suspect i know that they've been in the park i know that there's the f fingerprints are all over the crime scene so i'm then trying to find out well when were you last in the park? you know how long have you been there who do you know so th a lot of those questions are instinctive some of them i know i should ask because i know there needs to be a response so it's a very structured so did the plots always work or did you get to a point in the episode go, that's not going to work? Oh, we argued a, a, a lot. But we didn't have any time to argue it. <laughs> so we kept going. So kept going. To stick with it anyway. But there was no, you... often we'd just chuck stuff in and, and then they'd have to work it out in the edit, to be honest. But, but, this, but did, did anybody know that, that, that who actually did it say this first one? No, we knew, we knew, we always knew who did it. Right, you, right. you sort of have to know that if you're playing it right. in a way because... Um, Would it be more authentic? I mean, look, it's not a it's not a board game, which <laughs> is you know um, like the final reveal, and we all go, oh, oh my god! Yeah. Um, so it be more so if you didn't, because that's what the police don't know. Um, I don't think so, because I think that's there was a there was a reality show where they got people to investigate, and I think then that becomes a game. So we we're ultimately we are making a drama yeah. here, so we yeah. still need to know in some ways, you know, you sort of need to know where to pitch an interview. Um, and you know you don't in a way um, but it's all based on the it all makes sense within how it would really run I think um, I mean I try not I, I tried hard not to be very emotional in the interviews for that reason because I, I, I took the police officers that I talked to you know you would want to hold your cards you don't want to give it all away and I think I'll tell you, you know you know, when I, on the rare occasion that I have played a cop, which is years ago, and just guessing, but you know, you go, oh, marvelous! I can be really angry and I can be really upset. And you know, but actually, they don't do it like that. Mm -hmm. So it's about you've got to hit middle ground because the reality of procedure, of course, in the police is often boring to watch. So it can't be. That's why they haven't just shot a documentary. That's you go. Well, why don't you just stick a camera in a police station? Well, the reason for that is because then that isn't as dramatic as you would want it to be. It would take you six months to get the material. It's hard to believe that you didn't take this quite a uh, It's hard to believe you didn't take this first act home with you because it's it's really quite brutal and you're a mum in real life and here you are dealing with, the, as you know, the, the tragic death of a child. Did you ever find yourself... Um, I, your well, I was very upset when that boy in that... Um, when that little boy who was really crying when he was saying about... Um, about having trying to protect his sister mm. um I, that i found very very difficult and i guess again that's real i mean is that i was trying not to cry when he was doing that as an actor because i didn't want to steal his moment but as a police officer in charge of the case well how would that have been that i would have broken down in tears so well, it, uh, it was all a police officer would not no. have let that barrier down under no circumstances because you have to remain in charge if that in front of that child he may have wanted to then tell me something else but he would have then stopped 
had oh, me cry. I mean, the mother's just been told that her, her daughter is dead. He's just killed his sister. It's for me to cry, you know, as a police officer, I mean, you know. Mm. So I think, again, but that's me working off instincts as much as anything else. Um, just going, it's not my place. It's not my place to cry as an actor, but it's not my place to cry as, a, as the, um, you know, the person in charge of this, of this investigation. So I think it's sort of, I think the thing about the process that we found out is that a lot of the things as actors that we were going through were quite useful, basically, for giving it you know, a sense of reality. I mean, the thing about it is that I, I'm, you know, I'm actually, in some ways, I'm not a fan of, I don't really watch police dramas that much. And um, I saw half of this at home and happened to flick over to something on another channel, which will remain nameless, that is a sort of something that we're all very fond of, is a standard police drama. And it's amazing how dated that looks compared, this feels very um, sort of, I think this just feels Fresh. faster and fresher it, and- I actually, I actually meant after you finished filming for the day and you went home and you think about what you've done that day, did, that, did you not get affected by the storyline um, Don't forget, I don't have the music playing. <laughs> <laughs> when they show a picture of a kid, you haven't got... Mm. <laughs> um, so there is, you know what I mean, it's doing its job for you to believe that that is the case. Yeah. But yes, I mean, uh, one always... You th I, I think you think about it more when, you, when I read the plots. And you go, my heart slightly sinks when there's a kid missing or there's a kid yeah. dead. You go, oh, God, I've got to do that for two days. Really? Can't we have someone nick someone's handbag? <laughs> <laughs> it is quite sort of unrelenting in a sense, compared with a lot of other crime dramas which might explore the personalities mm. of the policeman. How do you think an audience will take that different style? Of um, uh, yes, it's interesting because I threw in a, quite a bit more humour into it. Was, it. Yeah, there, was there was only one, but trust me, there was a lot more uh, inappropriate dead kid jokes. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's just my, it's not my sense of humour, but it's the, I'm, you know, I, like I, in real life, in a way as a reaction to something that is emotional, my instinct as a person is to go, you know, to make a, a bad joke often. Funnily enough, they've cut a lot of it out because I think they did feel actually, it's not about you, love. It's not, I mean, a lot of the personal stuff, I put in a whole subplot about recycling. Nobody's interested in that. <laughs> recycling in the office. Um, yeah. yeah, but um, no, but on a more serious note, no, it, it wasn't that I made jokes about uh, kids, but I did sort of try and put in, you know, all of us tried to put in a bit of um, personality. And I think, you know, hopefully a little bit will come through. But it's this, that's why this is different as well. It's, we are watching... There's nothing soapy about it later on, the, the, the police themselves. You never go home. You, know right. you never go home with the police because, and the reason for that is because staying true to the format of the sort of documentary style, it would never happen that you could... Just like you don't go home with the criminals as well. You don't, you don't see them doing the crime in the way that you do in Lewis in Frost or in, in any, you know, mur murder she wrote, I don't know, where you see them nicking the diamond and you see them washing their hands to get rid of the evidence. If you're a documentary crew, you haven't seen that, otherwise we know who it is and we'll just nick them. So it, you're, you're in the station, you're with us, you're in our cars. It, 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 I mean, they, they don't break that and at no point do we do we cheat that and, and it, pretend? Don't you know, it, 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 don't you often, do you reshoot scenes? And, I mean, are they much longer? Than, than, than they're longer, get, but you get one or two. Work. One or two, that's one all. Two, and sometimes two, one, two. a couple of pickups if we've missed something, vital bit of evidence. So it's really... Or as sometimes happened, we yeah. were laughing uncontrollably. Yeah. That it was sometimes an issue. So it's quite, I mean, that's quite exhausting to do that. It was utterly exhausting when um, when they just said, "Oh, hopefully it'll be on every day." So I'm like, <laughs> "Well, not unless I am booked into a mental asylum, <laughs> where um, uh, mental health, I should say, mental she's health a, clinic." She's, she's um, drama. It's really good. I mean, it's, it's also uh, to be done quite cheaply um, and effectively. But it's the correct. cheapest thing you've ever done. <laughs> 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 Well, I've done some porn that was true. <laughs> um, no, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know what the budget was. Yeah. I would actually really not like to know what the budget was. Yeah. Um, you know, what can I say? Um, I didn't have a Winnie. I did not have a Winnie Baker. I didn't have a dressing room. Yeah. I didn't have, um, I didn't have any of the, the glamour, of, of the glamour of showbiz we can delete. Delete. Yeah, dressing room. <laughs>
Oh, um, right. No, but I mean, I'm being, I'm being flippant. But, but it wasn't, you know, it, there were very long days. It was very hard. But, but um, I think there was a point at which I nipped into the edit suite and went, I think it's going to pay off, so it's okay. It's when it doesn't pay off that that's not okay. So it, it's good. And and if it's getting drama onto Channel Five and it's as good as I, as I think it is, then it's worth it. Sorry. You're saying uh, before Christmas you've now become more adept at recognising who might be the, the killer you know, yes. in real life cases. Yes, I really am good uh, now. And there's one particular real life case that you think you've got a handle on. Yes, it's the Annecy shooting. What? I saw a documentary on the, you know, the Annecy shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, there was a documentary on while I was filming. Yeah. And I, I, before, you know, I'd sort of watch it and go, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? But I'm like, in the first five minutes, I'm like, I'm all over this. It's, it's the uncle. Yeah. It's the uncle. He's done it. I mean, it's ri totally ridiculous. Um, as I say, I've got a f false sense of my own ability to now solve <laughs> crimes. <laughs> what were you doing on the internet last year? Last, what was, last what was the show? Was the oh, program? it's called Bitchcraft. Right. It, was, it, was a, it was a fun thing on the internet, but I, you know, I did it for a lot of the same reasons, really, just to, I, I, I'm, you know, like I write cookbooks, you know, I don't, I don't like to do things conventionally. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows, beyond this, Hairdressing? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Just really one yes. quick question. You've been asked this a hundred times, but the cold feet, yes. the reunion thing, is it ever going to happen? Well, sadly, the actors are the last cog in the wheel. Okay. So you need the writers and then you need the producers, you need somebody else to make it. So, you need to so all the actors have always said, yes, yes, we do it again. I think that might have changed now. I think we've all taken a long, cold look in the mirror and gone, <laughs> now it's just going to be awful there was a point at which we were all done i think now we have to honestly say it's put to bed i would be very surprised yeah. <laughs> we could oh i mean this is the thing you say you know you, now you just go right well let, we can do anything now